Every business website needs traffic. You can direct traffic to your site by either organic search engine results, links and emails to your subscribers, or by paid advertising means. But a key tool and asset in establishing your web presence is using social media platforms to bring in traffic. In this video, I'll show you how to set up a Facebook page for your business, a Twitter profile, and Google accounts including a YouTube brand account and channel for your business, and a Google Plus account. Let's do this. Welcome to how to set up key social media profiles for your business. If you've been following along with your ultimate web presence checklist, which you can download below in the description area if you haven't already, you are now at video 11 in the web presence video series titled how to easily create a web presence for your business, even if you have zero technical skills. I'm Kevin Stryker with True Lift Digital Marketing. Let's get right at it. In the last video, video 10, how to find a WordPress theme that works for you, we discussed what a theme is, what you need to look for in a theme, where to find themes, both free and premium, including some great resources, and then I walked you through an over-the-shoulder view of how I installed a premium theme on my new website. If you've got a website, the lifeblood of your site is traffic. Visitors coming to see what you are about, learning something, and hopefully ultimately purchasing your products and services, often referred to as monetizing your site. One marketing strategy to increase that traffic to your site is referred to as the hub and spoke strategy by some marketers, or even the home base and outpost strategy. The concept is the same, whereby your website is at the center and the spokes or outposts that go out and bring traffic back to your site where the traffic can be monetized are organic search results from places like Google, like we talked about in video nine, introduction to SEO, and links you place in emails to your subscribers, a topic we will be discussing more at trueliftdigital.com. But another very powerful traffic source is of course, social media. While social media for personal use is about communicating and sharing information with friends and family, as a business tool, it's extremely powerful in reach that can help make people aware of your business and what you have to offer by bringing them back to your website or even teaching them directly about you on their respective social platform. Information about your company or your products and services can be shared organically inside of the platforms or by paid advertising means, but that's a topic for another time and something we'll talk about a lot more at trueliftdigital.com in our lead generation section as we get our site rolling. The point I'm trying to make is that social is a very important means of obtaining traffic. And with that in mind, like I said in the intro, in this video, we'll set up some key social media profiles, specifically a Facebook page for your business, Twitter profile, YouTube channel, and Google Plus account. And then tie all of those profiles together with the SEO tool we installed in the Introduction to SEO video, video nine, to hopefully amplify their impact. You can also use what you learn here to set up other profiles as well in Instagram, Pinterest, or wherever you feel your audience will be most likely congregating so that you can effectively reach them. If you check back with our site, I'll go into more detail about all things digital marketing, or if you subscribe to this channel, you will be notified as soon as those new videos come out. One last quick note though, before we dig in. You may already have one or two of these social profiles set up for yourself, or perhaps one or two of the platforms that I will be discussing may not be relevant to your specific business. So by all means, utilize the timestamps below in the description area, if you're watching this video on YouTube, to jump forward and back to those sections that you feel are most relevant to you. Let's start with the good old Facebooks by going to facebook.com. Now, especially with Facebook, but with all of the other social platforms we will be going through in this video, keep in mind that what you see on your screen in terms of user interface may be slightly different as UIs are forever updating but you should still be able to find what I'm referring to by looking around a bit. It may look slightly different or be in a slightly different place. In this section, we will go through setting up a Facebook page for your business. And if you are interested in setting up a Facebook business manager for your business as well, an optional step, in part two of this video, I'll show you how to quickly do that. The prerequisite for setting up a Facebook page for your business is that you first have to have a personal Facebook account. Probability suggests that you are likely already one of the 1.4 billion monthly active Facebook users or whatever it is now, in which case you already have an account. And the first thing to do is to sign in at the top by entering your email address you used to create your Facebook account or your mobile number followed by your password and then click login. But if you do not yet have a Facebook account in order to set up what used to be referred to, I think as a, as a Facebook fan page, but I think is now just referred to as a page for your business, 
apart from your personal Facebook profile but connected to it, you will have to create a personal profile first by signing up. Simply fill in your first name, last name, and either your mobile number or email address that you want to use to log into Facebook and receive notifications on, etc., and then re-enter it to ensure that there are no mistakes. The reason for your mobile number or email address is you are going to receive either an email or a text message with a Facebook confirmation code that you will require shortly to verify that you are in fact the owner of that email address or mobile number. Then create a password and enter in your birthday info and it tells you why they want to see that here. Then select female or male, check out the terms of service here, the data policy, and the cookie use documentation. Once you are all good with all of that, then just click on sign up. Since I already have a personal account, I can't show you the exact steps. I think it might be outside of Facebook's terms of service if I create a dummy account to show you the steps, and I don't want to make Facebook mad at me to be honest, because I need them for my advertising. But essentially, when you click the sign up button, you will then have to verify that you are in fact the owner of either that email address or the mobile phone number that you used to create your account with. If you used your email address above, you will have to go to your email client where you will find an email from Facebook. In that email, you can either click on or tap on, if you're on a mobile device, a link to confirm that email address. In that email is going to say something like, you recently registered for Facebook. To complete your Facebook registration, please confirm your email account. And then there will basically be a button that you can click on uh, to confirm that account. Or if you use the mobile number, you will receive an SMS or text message that likely looks similar to the one that I received here when I created my personal account saying 123456 or some six random digits is your Facebook confirmation code. There will be a pop-up on your screen asking for that confirmation code. Enter the code from your phone in the confirmation box there and click continue or whatever it prompts you to click on or tap on and it will say something like your email address or your mobile phone number is confirmed. And then likely try to walk you through some sort of configuration wizard type of thing where they show you how to get around inside of Facebook and upload your contacts from your phone or email address book, etc. Which, if you're interested in and new, could be quite helpful, or you can just skip through that. My goal here, though, is to show you how to set up a Facebook page for your business, and there are a couple of different ways to do that. One of which is by clicking the link below first, and then you will log into your personal account. But I'm just going to log into my account first and show you how to do it inside of my personal Facebook account. I'll just enter my email and password at the top and click login. Again, Facebook is forever changing their look, but your personal page should look something like this, and this is where you'll end up when you log in. You can either go down the left side here, where it says create page, and click on that, or you can go up to the blue bar at the top on the right side, click the drop down, and go to and click on create page. Before I do that though, I just wanted to point out that once you create a separate page for your business, Facebook suggests setting up a business manager to oversee your business activities in Facebook, like assigning team members and accessing ad accounts, etc. as good business practice, as it adds to the legitimacy of your business. Now that may seem a little bit confusing at first, so don't worry. Like I said, I will circle back to that in part two of this video if you're interested. But you can see in this drop down here, this is where you can access your business manager for your page once it is created. This is a business manager I have set up for another one of my websites, autorespondersreview.com, which I will be shutting down once trueliftdigital.com gets up and running. Once I set up the business manager for TrueLift, this is where it will show up. Let's keep rolling. Click on create a page. Now Facebook wants you to choose a page type. So choose whether you are a local business, like a brick and mortar store, company, organization, or institution, if you have a brand or product, cause or community, entertainment, etc. Whichever is the most applicable to your situation. This one here makes the most sense for me, so I'll click on it. Then click the drop down to choose a category. I'm not really a computer company. I do fall under consultant for parts of my business. But let's keep looking here. What would I be? Okay, I'll just go with internet company. Not quite the most accurate, but whatever for now. You can easily change this later if you want. Company name is going to be True Lift Digital Marketing. Take a look at the Facebook page terms. I kind of gloss over things like this in this video, but as much of a hassle as reading these things are, if you plan to advertise with Facebook, staying in their good graces is, is important, so having a read through this would probably not be a bad idea. Just click Get Started. If you want to skip this stuff for now and think about what you want to write, you can do this later. 
I'm just going to enter a quick description that I copied from my website. That seems to cut off some text, so I'll just make some quick changes. Looks like that will fit now. Just enter your website URL or other social media links if you have that already. In this video, we'll get to those shortly. For now, I'll just go with my website, trueliftdigital.com. For a unique Facebook username, this is kind of an important area. I'm going to try to get the same True Lift Digital with no spaces that I have for my website. You should try to look ahead and see what other, uh, see what you can get on other platforms so that you can keep them consistent if possible. If you can't, don't worry too much about it. It's just a bonus if you can. I looked ahead on Twitter already and True Lift Digital hasn't been claimed yet, but True Lift has by some kind of hair company or, or something like that. And True Lift Digital Marketing is a bit too long. I could try something like True Lift DM, but let's try this and see if I can get this okayed. I'll just hit Save Info here. You can skip this section and come back if you want. I've actually got a separate video you can check out that can walk you through what sizes are required for your profile photos and header photos in all your social profiles we will be setting up today in this video and more. And also show you how you can quickly create your profile photos and header photos using a free program called Canva if you are interested. I'll leave a link to that video either below this one in the description area if you're watching this on YouTube or if you're viewing this video elsewhere just look around this video and you'll find that link. I'll quickly finish this step off. Profile picture. If you are a person or have a personal brand this will be a picture of you but I've got something on my computer I can upload here. This is what my entire logo looks like but I just want this square part here for my profile pic. I have a copy of that saved here. Just a quick tip, if you want the ability to do something like this with your logo, if you get it designed by a designer, remember to ask the designer to send you a separate file with your logo image separate from the text part of your image. You could crop it out yourself in most cases, but depending on your logo, it's often easier to just get the designer to send you your logo as a complete logo and then split up. I'll just click open. And there we go. I'll click next. Now it's asking if you want to add your newly created page to your favorites. You definitely can do that, but if you end up setting up your business manager in the next video to access your page, you'll have to do so through your business manager and it will be removed from this favorites shortcut. I'll be setting up a business manager, but for now, what the heck, add to favorites and click next. And lastly for setup, you can help Facebook with putting your page posts in front of specific groups of people if you want by entering targeting information. I'm not saying it's a bad idea if you have a specific group in mind, but I usually skip this step and let the Facebook algorithm figure this part out once I start running ads to various target markets, etc. So if you want, go ahead and create an audience to view your page posts. I'm just going to skip this. And there you go. It's not complete yet, but here is the brand new business page for True Live Digital Marketing, and if you follow it along, yours will look similar. Keep in mind that this is what you'll see when you look at your page, not exactly what other people coming to your page will see. If you want to see what a visitor sees, click on the More drop-down below your cover and then View as Page Visitor. For some reason this doesn't always work in Facebook, but give it a try if you're curious. Doing a full setup of your page is important before you start to get visitors to your page so you can give the best impression for your business. So definitely start adding some posts, but also add a button on your page if you want a call to action to your website or something. It's pretty self-explanatory. Like I said earlier, I'll leave a link to how to quickly create a cover in Canva below this video or somewhere on this page if you're viewing this video outside of YouTube. But for now, I'll just quickly add a cover I created in Canva to show you how easy it is to do. Refer to that video for more detail. I'll just click on Add a Cover and then Upload Photo. Now I'll just find where I put it. I think it's this one. Yep, I'll open that. And there you go. Definitely could be better, but for now, I'll just save that. Now if you go up to the drop down on the far right of the blue bar at the top, you can see that my new page for TrueLift Digital Marketing is accessible at the top of that drop down, at least until I place it in my business manager in the next video. If you click on your page up here, you then get a clean URL for your new page. Highlight your URL and copy it and save it in your password tracker if you have that downloaded under the social section. If you haven't downloaded it yet but want to, there's a link to download yours below this video. Or save it somewhere where you will know where to find it because you will need it for the last step in this video, 
when we put your social URLs into your Yoast SEO area of your WordPress dashboard. Like I said, there's more to do inside your page here before you start to get visitors, but let's move along to Twitter and setting up other social profiles. I'll just go to the arrow and click on it to drop down the menu and then go to log out and click on it. On the address bar, I'm just going to go to twitter.com. You can only have one Twitter account per email address. So rather than log in if you already have an account, which I do, since we are setting up a new one for your business, let's start from scratch by clicking sign up. FYI, you can easily connect your accounts later. For full name, this is not the same as your handle, which is like your Twitter name that followers use when sending at replies, mentions, and direct messages. So this doesn't have to be your business's name. This can be your personal name if you want. I do have another account that uses Kevin Stryker, and if you want to do that here, use your personal name, that's fine. Go for it. When you send a tweet, which is a Twitter message, in my case it would say basically from Kevin Stryker and then the at symbol and then my handle. You'll see what I mean in just a second. For me though, for this particular business, I'm just going to use the same name that I hope to use for my handle, part of my business name, TrueLift Digital, with no spaces. Whether you use your business name or personal name, you're limited to 20 characters here. So if I try TrueLift Digital Marketing, it will cut me off at 20 characters. So I'll go with TrueLift Digital, and the green arrow tells me that that will work. I'll put in the new email address that I created in video 4 of the series, kevin at trueliftdigital.com, and then enter a password. The green bar tells me that my password is relatively secure, so it's good to go. Now don't forget to put a copy of your email address that you signed up with, along with your password in either your password tracker, in the social section, or wherever you decide to keep your passwords. You have the option to tailor your feeds to sites that you recently visited. I'll leave that unchecked. You'll then want to read the terms of service, privacy policy, and cookie use. Then if you want, click on advanced options to let others find you in Twitter via your email address or phone number. For me, I'll uncheck those. And once you're good with all that, click on sign up. Then for account security and ease of connecting with friends, etc., you can give Twitter your phone number. I'll leave that up to you. I'm just going to skip it. Then choose a username. This is what will become your handle, which like I mentioned is like a Twitter name that others on Twitter will use to send you messages, mention you in their tweets, etc. It can be changed later if you want, and Twitter offers you some suggestions that you can use. If available, I want to try to maintain consistency, if I can, with my website URL, Facebook page URL, and any other social profiles. So I'm just going to put TrueLift Digital and see if it is available. Like I said earlier, I pre-checked this before I even set up my Facebook page profile, but the check mark confirms to me that it is available. If the one that you want is not available, it may not be ideal, but it's not the end of the world either. Just put something that identifies your business as closely as possible. For example, for me, if TrueLift Digital were not available, maybe I'd see if TrueLift DM is or True underscore Lift Digital, etc. is available, something like that. I'll click Next. Click Let's Go. Twitter wants to know what I'm interested in so it can make suggestions of who to follow and what I want to see in my feed. Your feed or timeline, just like Facebook, is posts, in this case tweets, from people you follow that are listed chronologically with the most recent at the top of your feed for you to view. When someone publishes a new tweet, if you follow them, the tweet shows up in your timeline to view. Feel free to select whatever you want, I'm just going to hit continue. Then if you want to upload your friends or contacts, you can allow Twitter to import your contacts from your Gmail account or Outlook account. I personally only intend on using Twitter for business and not really with any of my personal contacts on this account, so I'll just click no thanks. Your situation may be different. Based on my location, Twitter is making some suggestions of people and organizations to follow. You may want to jump on this right now and set some individuals or businesses to follow related to your business. I'll fill this in later, for now, I'll just add one guy who is another marketer that I like, Frank Kern, just to see what this guy puts in his feeds so I can get some ideas for tweets and see what Frank has to say. I know Twitter isn't really his thing, but whatever. I'll follow him to let Twitter know the kind of folks that I'm interested in following. I'll click follow one and continue. Welcome to Twitter. Here's what I've got so far in my new feed or timeline on my profile page. Some suggestions for who to follow below the middle welcome area and on the right. But first I need to confirm that the email address that I gave is legit, as it says on the top, so I'll head over to my email to take a look for the confirmation message from Twitter. 
I paused this video, checked my email on my phone, and didn't see anything yet from Twitter, so I just clicked resend confirmation. Maybe there was some kind of issue. Just like I said when we set up a Facebook page for your business, you should try to complete as much of your profile as you can before you start to get visitors to your page. My profile info is on the left here, and while I'm waiting for that confirmation email, I'll quickly add a profile photo. If you skip the Facebook portion of this video, if you wanted to know the sizes of your profile photo and header profile photo, I have a link to a continually updated guide on all social profile images from Sprout Social in the description area below this video. Click on Upload Photo, find the one that I want, and click Open. I can resize it, I'll just click Apply. And there you go. My profile is now at 30% complete. You can now see that profile image here and here. Off camera, I just checked my email address again and there is nothing there. I checked my spam and junk folders and nothing. So, I could edit this part out of the video, but just in case something like this happens to you, my guess is that the reason I can't receive that email is because I'm using a private window in Firefox, as you can see up here at the top with this little privacy mask, otherwise known as an incognito window if you use other browsers which basically blocks cookies and pop-ups. Perhaps Twitter needs or wants to have the ability to drop code within my browser, and if you're not sure what that means, don't worry about it, but I think that I'll have to log out of this browser and open a new one and then log back into Twitter in order to resend the confirmation to get this thing confirmed. Before I do though, I'm just going to click on my profile image on the top bar here and view my profile. I just want to show you that here is your Twitter URL at the top. You will want to copy that and save it inside of your password tracker in the social section beside Twitter page along with the email that you use to create your account and your password or wherever you are saving passwords and URLs related to your business. Your handle by the way or the way that people will find you on Twitter or link tweets to you etc is the at symbol followed by the text that comes after the twitter.com forward slash. Just like it appears down here below your profile pic and full name and over here in this tweet at TrueLift Digital. That is now my handle, so if I was to send this pre-written tweet or Twitter message by clicking on Tweet or create my own tweet down here below, it will read just like it does here at the top of the tweet, TrueLift Digital at TrueLift Digital. As a reminder, I could change my name from TrueLift Digital to Kevin Stryker, in which case the tweet would read Kevin Stryker at TrueLift Digital, just in case that's what you wanted yours to read. I'll just go to my profile image on the top bar to drop down some options and click log out quickly and then log in with a non-private browser window. Twitter.com in the URL field, log in, phone email or username, I'll use my username, and password. You can have your browser save your username and password for convenience, but I don't. Let's try this again, resend confirmation. It says confirmation has been sent. Hopefully this solves the problem. I only have that email account set up on my phone, so I'll check my phone to see if it came through. And hallelujah, here it is on my phone. Just click on, or tap in this case, the blue Confirm Now button. And here I go, a login screen, which means I'm in. It says that it has already been confirmed, but that's not the case, unless they mean just now. So if I wanted to log into Twitter on my phone, I could do that here. I'll quickly do that to make sure that things are good before I go back to my laptop. Username and password and then log in. And here I am. I've got my profile image on the right side so I know that this is the correct account and it's showing me a tweet from Frank Kern, the only one that I'm currently following, and then below it are either paid Twitter ads or suggestions for people to follow or businesses to follow. Since I have the Twitter app installed on my phone, I can open that app by tapping above or this pop-up is asking me if I want to move from this web browser to the app, so I'll click open. It apparently took me to one of my old Twitter profiles, so I'll have to update the app to include my new TrueLift digital profile, but while I'm here I'll just scroll quickly to the top to show you that for this autoresponders review profile, I used Kevin Stryker as my name and AutoResRev as my username, which became my handle at AutoResRev. It's an old account that I don't use anymore. Let's just go back to my laptop. Since that basically worked and a successful confirmation message was received by email and responded to, this portion at the top will go away, I'm sure, the next time I log in on a desktop or a laptop. 
Here's that same Frank Kern tweet you saw on my mobile phone, and it's pulling in Frank Kern tweets and suggestions on who to follow in my timeline if I'm interested in checking that out. So finish off your profile, introduce yourself, Twitter will guide you through that, you can skip that for now or dig in and save your changes. But let's keep rolling with setting up your Google account, YouTube channel, Google Plus account, etc. So I'll just log out. Okay, now I'm here in Google, just google.com. We're going to start with a new Google account. Whether you have a Google account already or not, I'm going to click on sign in, but then go forward as if you don't already have a Google account. If you do have a Google account, of course you can sign in using that account and skip this part of setting up a new account and Gmail account that is perfectly fine. But despite the fact that creating a new account means more email addresses and passwords, etc., I'm a simple guy who can get confused quite easily, so I like to separate all of my personal stuff from my business stuff and keep my separate businesses separate from each other, if that makes sense. That may not be the absolute best way to do things, but it has worked for me. At first this may seem confusing, but like Facebook, Google wants you to have a personal account first and then a business account attached to your personal account. I like to create a new personal Google account with a business specific Gmail address to distinguish it from my other Google accounts. Hopefully that didn't just confuse the heck out of you, but if it did, don't worry. Just follow along with me and it will begin to make sense. In fact, if you are following along with me here, I'd probably suggest just watching the next few Google steps of creating a new Gmail account, YouTube channel, Google Plus account, and Google My Business account first to see how I do it, and then go back to this point in the video and watch it again. And if you want to follow my steps exactly, cool. If you want to set up everything your own way using an existing Gmail and Google account, that's cool too. This is your business. Do things however you want. I'm going to go below the sign in portion to create account here and click on that bad boy. Now just fill out the information just like any personal account. You can actually use your own email address if you want, but like I said, I'd like to create a new Gmail account for TrueLift, so I'll enter TrueLift Digital and then a password and confirm the password. Then either save those in your password tracker under social, Gmail account, or wherever you save those. Enter your birthday, gender, mobile and your current email address, I'm just going to leave those out and click next step. By choosing agree, you agree to the policies of a Google, so you should have a read of all this stuff. It's kind of important stuff. I'm just going to hit agree for now. So now I have a new Google account and Gmail account, trueliftdigital at gmail.com. And if you followed along, you now have the same. Nice work. Now that you have a Google account, or if you previously had one, you can log in using that email address and the password you just created to all of Google's apps like YouTube, which is owned by Google, Picasa, Google Drive, etc. We'll see a full list of those apps right away. You may have to initialize some apps quickly after signing in, but other than that, you're ready to go. But that is not the same as having business accounts for all of those apps. Like I mentioned, we have to have a personal account, we've completed that step now, and then tie business accounts to that personal account. The next step is to set up a YouTube brand account, then Google My Business account, and finally a Google Plus account for your business. That sounds like a lot, but it's really not bad if you follow along. You can set up more if you want, but that's what we'll cover in this video in the next couple of minutes. Just a quick note, notice in the top right that K with the bluish circle around it. This lets me know that I'm currently logged in as Kevin Stryker. Once I set up a Google My Business account for TrueLift Digital, I can change back and forth between being logged in as Kevin Stryker or my business easily. I'll show you that shortly. So the next step is hit continue, which will take you back to the standard Google search page. You'll notice that your Gmail account is up here since I'm still logged in. You can check your Google Apps here, we'll do that in just a second, and here you can check out your personal information and privacy settings, so let's click in there for a quick second. I'll click on my account. Here you can personalize your account further with regard to sign-in security, personal info and privacy, and your account preferences for all of your Google accounts and apps. Feel free to look around in here if you want and change things that you feel are important. If I click on this icon, which includes Google Apps, you see a quick list of the most common apps that you may desire to use, but I'm going to show you all of the apps by clicking More and then Even More. So here you can find all things Google, but I'll just quickly point out just a couple. Google AdWords, you may use this to do your advertising inside of Google related products, including YouTube. Google My Business is something to really dig into, particularly if you have a brick and mortar or local business. We are going to go into that shortly to set up TrueLift as a brand inside of Google and create a Google Plus account for that brand. 
you likely know more or use more of Google's features or apps like Google Maps, Google Earth, or Picasa, but for now, the next thing I'm interested in creating is a brand account for TrueLift Digital Marketing for a YouTube channel that I will create and show you how to do the same. So I'll just click on YouTube. You'll notice that since this is my first time coming to YouTube with my new login information, that it did not keep me automatically logged in. So for the first time, I just have to click on Sign In. And now this particular Google account is registered with YouTube. Now I'm going to go to my channel on the left sidebar where I can create a new channel where I can post videos and people can view my videos. But rather than create a YouTube channel personally for Kevin Stryker, I'm going to click down below here on use a business or other name to create a channel for my business, TrueLift Digital Marketing. To do that, as it says here, I have to create a brand account. So I'm just going to input TrueLift Digital Marketing and click create. And there you go. I now have a channel created for TrueLift Digital Marketing that is tied to my personal Kevin Stryker Google account. Now just like I suggested when we created your Facebook and Twitter accounts early in this video, you will want to personalize your YouTube channel with images up here in the channel art section and put in a profile picture either of yourself or your company logo or however you want to brand your channel. And then enter some information on what your channel is going to be about by clicking on channel description and entering that information here. So go ahead and do that before you start posting videos or getting traffic to your channel. I'm just going to click on cancel for now. To know what your URL is for your new YouTube channel, you could just look up here at the top address bar, but that contains some additional text related to your specific page you are on inside your channel. So the easiest way to get your YouTube URL is to click on your business name here, in my case, TrueLift Digital Marketing. Now in the address bar, you have your channel URL. I would suggest copying that URL and placing it in your password tracker under social if you have one, or saving it wherever you are keeping your website related URLs, passwords, etc. As a reminder, if you want your own password tracker, there's a link in the description area below this video for you to do that. This URL is important because you may want to use it as a link on your website to direct traffic to your channel or links in emails, etc. If you've watched this video from the beginning, you will recall that so far I've got a personalized URL for Facebook of facebook.com slash trueliftdigital and one for Twitter as well, twitter.com slash trueliftdigital. And I would also like to have an easy to remember channel URL for YouTube of youtube.com slash trueliftdigital. But with Google, you can't quite yet. And I'll explain that in just a second. Before I do that, I just want to show you two other items you can place in your password tracker or Excel sheet or Google Sheets or whatever. Let's just go to the top right and click on this profile icon, which will be whatever image you enter for your profile image as soon as you do so. And then click on this little gear icon beside Creator Studio to get into your YouTube settings. Here you can modify your YouTube settings for your account, but for now just click on Advanced underneath your business name. Here you have your YouTube user ID and your YouTube channel ID. You can always come back here to get these if you need them, but I find it easier just to keep all of my IDs, passwords, URLs, etc. together in one place, so I'm just going to copy these and place them in my password tracker. You can obviously do whatever you want or skip this step altogether, it's completely up to you. The top one is just your personal user ID and the bottom one is for your business's channel, i.e. Kevin Strikers and TrueLift Digital Marketings. Now ideally, like I said, you would want your channel ID to be easier to remember, so let me just show you something quickly. We're just going to open a new tab and do a Google search for Custom YouTube Channel URL, and then choose this option from support.google.com. If you read this top part, it will basically tell you that you can get a custom URL for both YouTube and Google+, but you first have to be eligible to do so, and then you will have to claim your URL. So for eligibility requirements, I'll just click this drop down arrow here. And it tells me that in order to get a custom URL, I have to meet the following. Have more than 100 subscribers, be at least 30 days old, etc. Since I just created this account, I am not yet eligible. So just keep this in mind if you're interested in a custom URL for both your YouTube business channel and your Google Plus accounts, and then come back and claim that URL once you meet these requirements. I'll just quickly show you this as well. At the top, you will notice that I am still signed in in Google with my personal account for Kevin Stryker as denoted with this bluish K circle. But if I click inside there and then on my account and then click back inside of the same profile icon, you can see that my brand account is now tied to my personal account and I can switch between personal and brand account easily. If I click on the brand account, I can modify the settings for it here. But notice that this teal colored T shows up at the top when I am logged in and using my brand account. 
That will change to a logo icon or whatever I change my profile image to once I do that, which will make it even easier to distinguish between the two accounts. That can be a little confusing at first, but just play around with it and it will begin to make sense. While I am currently using my TrueLift digital brand account, and I click on the Google Apps icon at the top here, I only have two options, YouTube and Photos, because YouTube is the only app that I have registered yet with this brand, and Photos I guess is just a default app that doesn't require registration. But if I switch back to the view from my personal account, Kevin Stryker, you now know that I am viewing things in my personal account of Kevin Stryker, as denoted by the bluish case circle and if I click on the Google Apps icon, it shows me the apps available for Kevin Stryker. So now let's create a Google Plus account for you. To do that, while you have a brand account for YouTube, you have to create one for the Google My Business account as well. So let's click on More in the apps, and then Even More, and then click on Google My Business. Now if you have a brick and mortar store, where you sell your products and services, or a physical location where clients may come to visit you, you will want to click on the Start Now button and set things up for your Google My Business account, because it will allow those people that find your business on Google to see things like your store hours, or click on Google Maps to help find your business, etc. I would highly recommend setting that up. Not only does it help you look more professional, but it provides value to your customers and clients by helping them physically find you and learn more about your business at a glance when searching in Google. For this video though, rather than click on the Start Now, we're going to click on the Sign In link at the top. From here I'll choose a business type. For me and my business, I'm not a brick and mortar business, and I don't have a specific geographic region that I work within, so I'll choose Brand. And now we go straight into creating a Google Plus page. The page name for me will be TrueLift Digital Marketing. Then I'll enter the website URL, http colon double forward slash trueliftdigital.com. And I'll keep it on product or brand, but you can also choose one of these below or other. You should check out the page terms by clicking this link here, but I'll just click I agree and then click on Create Page. You come to this welcome screen. Just click Get Started. And there you go. You've created a Google My Business account, in my case a brand account for your business. By doing so, you have also effectively created a Google Plus page for your business. If I scroll down and click on Google Plus, I am taken to my Google Plus page for TrueLift Digital Marketing. Just click on Continue. And then let's go. If I now click inside of Google Apps, while being logged in with my brand account, you can see that I can access my Google Plus account, which I'm currently in, check out Insights, my Google My Business account, YouTube, and Photos. To find out your Google Plus address, just go to Home. The 21 digit number up here is your Google Plus account number, but for the URL, just highlight the entire URL here and paste that into your password tracker or wherever you are keeping your URLs. You now have all the social profiles initially set up that we are going to be setting up in this particular video. If you have been following along with this video series from the beginning, or at least if you watched video 9 in this series, Introduction to SEO and the Yoast SEO plugin, you can now enter those respective social profiles into your Yoast SEO plugin inside of WordPress. On the home stretch here. So let's open a new tab and log into your WordPress dashboard, trueliftdigital.com slash wp admin username and password and log in. And then on the left sidebar, slide down to SEO and then over to social and click on that. And then just go back and forth to your password tracker or wherever you have your profile saved and paste or enter them here. In this video we created a Facebook page, so let's put that URL in here. In this case it is the full URL including the https colon double forward slash www etc. Then for Twitter, it is just your username, or the portion after twitter.com forward slash, or after the at symbol in your handle. While we didn't create them in this video, if you have created or have an Instagram account, or LinkedIn, or Pinterest account, etc., you can enter those in here as well. For me, I'll just enter my YouTube channel URL here, and then lastly, my Google Plus URL. And just as a reminder, once your YouTube and or Google Plus accounts are eligible, you can claim your custom URL for those and put them in here. Any place where you have these older URLs for your channel or Google Plus account will be forwarded to your new easy to remember URLs. Once you have entered the profiles you want for now, just hit save and you are done for this section. 
While we didn't actually download a specific social plugin in video 8, how to install 6 must-have WordPress plugins, if you did install a social plugin in WordPress, enter in the respective social profile URLs into your plugin to make it easier for your visitors to share your content. I'll admit this can be a little confusing, or at least it was for me when I first started doing this stuff. If you go back and review certain parts and follow along, substituting in your information in place of mine, you'll be fine. Let's just sum up what we've accomplished here and what is coming up in the next video. In this video, we talked about the importance of social media for bringing traffic to your site, showed you how to set up a Facebook page by showing you how I set one up for my business, showed you how to set up a Twitter profile, I started from scratch with a new Google account and Gmail account, then we created a YouTube brand account and channel that you can tie to your new personal Google account, created a Google My Business account so that you could create a Google Plus page, and finally, we placed all social profile URLs and the Twitter username into Yoast SEO on your WordPress dashboard. If you plan on advertising on Facebook, or if you have multiple people in your business that you want to give access to your Facebook business page or advertising account, or plan to outsource Facebook advertising to a third party, then you will want to set up a Facebook business manager. If you are interested in setting that up, I split up this video into a short part two showing you how to do just that that you can check out after this video. Following the steps in this video, provided you are putting solid content on your site, will help bring traffic to your site. But how do you know how much traffic you are getting? What pages that traffic is going to? How do you get back in front of those visitors that came but left right away? Well, that comes down to tracking. In video 12, the last one in this video series, we're going to install various tracking codes using Google Tag Manager. We'll set up tools like Google Analytics and Google Search Console, and then get you set up for remarketing, which is the ability to get back in front of those visitors that came to your site but didn't perform an action that you wanted them to by inserting Facebook pixels and Google AdWords pixels for your YouTube channel and website. This video series is for you even if you have zero technical skills, so don't be worried. I'll walk you through step by step how to do it all. The goal of video 12 is to help us collect information so that you can better determine what is working and not working so that you can best monetize your site and provide as much value as possible to your visitors. Can you help me help you? What do you think of this video or what do you think of this video series? How can I make it better for you and others? Was there any value that you can gain and apply in your business? Any topics that you want to see covered? Any questions that you have? Leave me a comment to let me know. If you received any value from this video, please hit the like button or share it because doing so allows us to help more people. As always, all of the resources and links that I mentioned in these videos can be found below the video in the description or wherever that description area is. I really enjoyed having you here and I hope you enjoyed it too. If you are interested in learning how to create your Facebook Business Manager, check out the short video by clicking on the link on your screen or in the description area. Or if you just want to jump straight to video 12 on tracking, click on that link. Thanks for watching.